Okay, so I've gone to the uh, link on the GitHub page that I showed you, and I've downloaded the latest copy of OpenWebRx Plus, and you can see it there sitting in my downloads folder. So what I need to do next is to burn that um, into a, an image for the Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, when it comes to burning the image on the SD card, I'm going to use Raspberry Pi Imager. I've had more success with this than I have with other programs. You'll see I've selected under Operating System. What I've done here is I've dropped down to Use Custom. I've selected the OpenWebRx file from my uh, hard drive on my computer. Under Storage, I've selected the drive that is my uh, micro SD card. It's that one there, the 15.9 gig. And one useful little feature of the Raspberry Pi Imager, if you see the gear icon here, what we need to do, we could do it manually, but if we do it at this stage, it's going to be easier. If we click on the gear icon, we need to enable SSH. Okay. And SSH will allow us to communicate with the Raspberry Pi. We won't have to connect a monitor or keyboard or anything. We will just be able to remotely alter files and um, introduce new files and software using SSH, but we have to set it up first. So we need a username. So I've just put uh, username Kev there and we'll just have the password as password. You'll see how all this works when we uh, set the Pi up. We'll just save that. We'll click on write. There's nothing on this card anyway, so you've got the warning there that uh, as, as we continue, we'll erase everything that's already on the card. It's not a problem. We'll just click yes. And um, we'll let the imager do its thing. And we'll come back when it's done. Here's one more piece of software I recommend. This is a piece of software called Advanced IP Scanner. You, you may have access to uh, other similar software that you prefer, and that's fine. But all this does is identify the devices that are connected to your network. So as long as the machine you're running this on is connected to the same network, you should be able to find where your new Raspberry Pi with its OpenWebRx SD card is. And of course, that's going to be very important if we want to use the receiver over the network or we want to interact in any way with the Pi and carry out any updates, we'll have to know the IP address. So if you've got advanced IP scanner, you just press the scan button and it'll look at the network. It'll identify as many devices as it can. You'll see I've got um, a Wi-Fi radio there that's come up already, a Bush Wi-Fi radio. And now we've got various others, the Kiwi SDR, but <clears throat> most importantly here for this, You'll see we've got OpenWebRx, and that's on 192.168.1.174. So that's the IP address we need to make a note of so that we can access the uh, Raspberry Pi and make any modifications or any changes, and also so that we can use the receiver that's connected to it. Okay, we've plugged our Raspberry Pi in, touch the SDR, the RTL SDR dongle. We found the Pi on our network using the IP scanner. So now let's see if we can communicate. Let's see if we can access the Pi and see how everything's looking. So hopefully you've made a note of the IP address that your Pi's come up with. So let's go 192. Dot one six eight dot one dot one seven four. That was what was that came up, and there we go. So this is a, a kind of virgin copy of OpenWebRx, and this is how it should look for you when you set it up at first. So let's click the big uh, play button. Okay, so uh, there you go. 
and the Open Web RX comes pre-programmed with a few bands and here they are now we've only got an RTL SDR plugged in here so at the moment we've got access to 70 centimeters and 2 meters there's some pre-programmed bands for the AirSpy and some for the SDR Play RSP but don't expect this software to work with certainly not with the SDR Play devices just by what we've done so far it, it, it's unlikely that it will mine certainly didn't I had to add some extra files uh, which I will go into on a future video but it's it's a little bit more difficult this is why I recommend that if you're doing this and you're not familiar with um, Raspberry Pis and communicating them uh, communicating with them using programs like putty and entering things into the terminal of the Raspberry Pi then I suggest you use an RTL SDR dongle to start off with because that will work pretty much out of the box as you see anyway we've got these two bands um, now we have um, also on the top right we have a settings button so using that function is what enables us to add extra bands and change the bands that are already there and so on so let's click the settings button and the default username should be admin and raspberry that's as it comes you can you can change these but let's go with that for now and okay we can see the various tabs that we've got under the settings menu what i suggest we look at first is sdr devices and profiles that's what can, it's going to control what bands we can use we've got the rtl sdr dongle so let's uh, click there you can see we've got the rtl sdr usb stick as they call it and it's running if we select that we can see there's the sort of general device settings here then we have the settings for 70 centimeters the settings for two meters we have an opportunity to add a new profile like that will be a new band let's first have a look at how the two meter band is set up um, so we've given it a name of two meters we've set a gain figure here of 29 we can vary this we've got a center frequency of 145 megahertz we've got a sample rate of 2.048 so basically that's we're going to have two just over two megahertz of bandwidth here so with the center frequency at 145 we'll be able to go up to 146 megs and down to 144 megs that's what that means the initial frequency self-explanatory that's where when we uh, click on the two meter band that's where we'll start off on one uh, four five seven two five we could change that we can change that if we want to uh, 145.5 145 500 the calling frequency in the certainly in the UK on two meters we're going to start off with um, FM as the, uh, the the initial mode we've got a tuning step of a, a thousand Hertz so that's going to be one kilohertz it's probably a bit low for uh, FM on two meters so uh, let's go to uh, 12 12,000 hertz which would be 12 kilohertz ideally it'd be 12.5 but that option doesn't seem to be available at the moment I think that may change in a future version so that's the two meter uh, band we just click apply and save and if we now go back to the receiver itself and we select two meters you'll see that we start on 145 500 the tuning step is applicable to these large arrow buttons at the top of the a frequency scale so we click on those and you can see now that we'll move up in 12 uh, kilohertz steps equally we can grab the cursor and just drag it to where we see a signal or we can actually with the mouse wheel on the frequency readout here we can manually just dial down the frequencies with the mouse okay at the bottom of the control panel here you'll see um it's like a waveform symbol 
you've got the record button there and this kind of waveform symbol if you click that that gives us a spectrum display you'll find that when you go into a new band on open web rx each time you change bands you'll need to click you need to reset the waterfall so if you look at the control panel here where we've got 12 kilohertz we've got a button next to that the tune and step button the button underneath that is the auto adjust waterfall button so we'll click that and you'll see now we've got um, the waterfall coming in, into play uh, no signals on this band at the moment I'm not using an ideal antenna for two meters I've got my uh, mini whip HF antenna on the uh, back of the RTL anyway but at least we can see the waterfall now let's have a look at a shortwave band we'll have to set one up so let's go back to settings SDR devices and uh, profiles the RTL SDR USB stick let's click on new profile we're going to put in the 49 meter broadcast band so we'll just name it 49 meters like that let's set a frequency or center frequency of six megahertz we'll set the sample rate just like we had on two meters of two zero four eight okay initial frequency we'll set in kilohertz and let's have uh, it doesn't really matter we can have 6070 make a station there we want to set the initial modulation as am because this is a broadcast band they're all going to be on am we'll set the tuning step as 5000 hertz that's five kilohertz now this is very important because we're using an rtl sdr stick on hf we need to enable direct sampling so here we've got additional optional settings if we click on this drop down you'll see we've got a direct sampling option we click that we click add and now it's up here direct sampling off where well, we want direct sampling to be on and we want it on the q branch direct sampling q branch we'll click that let's apply and save let's go back to our receiver okay so we're back with the uh the receiver itself now back on two meters if we click the drop down we've got uh, no rtl usb stick 49 meters so let's select that if we click on this uh, waveform here as we discussed we'll get a little spectrum display up at the top and the middle button of the right hand row we we'll click that to auto adjust our waterfall and there we go we've now got the 49 meter band programmed in okay we've got a station on that frequency of 6070 we can uh, using the plus button here we can zoom in on the waterfall I'll just turn the volume up again okay and we can tune as I said just by clicking clicking on the waterfall or we can rotate the uh, mouse wheel and step up as we choose we can use one kilohertz steps here or if we want to use the two large arrows here they should step us up and down in five kilohertz steps <clears throat> pardon me so that's how we can uh, we can use the interface we can zoom right in that's the maximum zoom in we can zoom out totally so that's the whole of our two megahertz bandwidth okay from five megs we're going here to seven megs 
it's maximum bandwidth we can really do with the RTL SDR dongle. And really with a Raspberry Pi 3 as well, that's the other limiting factor, that's what we're using here. We'd want to keep it to sort of 2 megahertz or below. And 2.048 seems to be a good sample rate for the RTL stick. So I hope that was of some interest. As you can see, there's a little bit of work to set it up. But it doesn't take too long, as long as if you're putting an HF band in here. And we'll just go back into the settings. Just log back in, SDR devices and profiles. Remember, if you're on HF, I think it's below 25 megahertz. So for 10 meters, you wouldn't need to do this. But you must set this direct sampling here. You must add it into the profile settings and set it to Q branch. Without that, the uh, RTL SDR won't work on HF. So there's a little look at the initial setup. Uh, in future videos, we'll have a look at some of the difficulties surrounding the SDR play devices and how we'll need to log into the Raspberry Pi using uh, PuTTY or similar software and put some commands in on the terminal of uh, the Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching.